All right, these are our retake videos for unit two. Um, I will put up in the screen here a little bit what you should jump to for each learning target, but we want to go over a couple things about retakes first. Retakes, we've decided, are happening for two reasons. One, because you need them and, you're, um, and you need some reteaching, and in that case, this is great. This is what you need to do. You'll go through each video. I'll go through the test questions and the answers for those and then give you some practice problems. Two, if you are using retakes as a way to not try and not study before the test, um, this better change, okay? Hopefully you're realizing that you're spending a lot more time after the test retaking um, than you could have just spent actually learning and advocating for yourself in the classroom um, before the test. So make sure that's conscious you're conscious of that going through from now until the end of the semester. So um, what's going to happen is I'm going to go through the, the test questions for each learning target. Then you need to um, write a little reflection on what you did incorrectly on the test. This is for everybody what you did incorrectly on the test and how you now understand how you get it better as well as doing that those practice problems. So that's a little addition from unit one's um, retake process. All right, so let's start with LT1. This is LT1 um, retake. Let's go over the test questions. You were asked to say whether these slopes are positive, negative, zero, or undefined. Um, this one, these should have been, these are like level two questions, so um, should have been pretty easy. This is a negative, this is undefined, and this is a positive. All right. Um, then we were actually asked to find the slope given a graph, and I guarantee you're here for either this problem and the problem below. Most of you would be. So we need the rise over the run. So here we go from 2 to 3 to 4 to 5. Um, so that's up 1, 2, 3. We run 2. Your slope would be 3 over 2, or a lot of people put 1.5, which is fine. Over here, first thing I notice is that we're going down. But then the second thing I notice is that we go from down from 0 to negative 2 and then to negative 4. So we go down 4 and over from 0 to 1, over 1. So our slope here should have been negative 4. A lot of people put negative 2 because they just counted boxes down 2 over 1. Let's look at another one. Um, here we're going up, but I see we're going up from 3 all the way to 6. 9, 12, that's a rise of 9. And then we're going over from negative 4 to negative 2. That's a run of 2. So my slope would be, oops, would be 9 over 2. Or if you want to reduce that, that would be 4.5. Okay. And then finally, from here to here, let's choose two nice points. This one's easy. Again, we can count boxes down 2 over 3. So our slope is negative 2 thirds. Okay. So Take a minute, analyze that. How do you feel about those problems? Um, you can either write your reflection first and then try the practice problems, or go ahead and try these three practice problems. Find the slope of each, be careful, count the numbers, um, and make sure you're, you're looking at the scale. Then write a reflection. What did I do incorrectly on the test? How do I now know the correct problem? So you should give your, pro your teacher three answers here, plus a little paragraph of reflection, and that's learning target one. Learning Target 2 retake video. Um, we're going to go over the test questions and then I'm going to give you some practice problems. You are asked to create or calculate the rate of change from a table. So here we're going to calculate our change in y over our change in x from 8 to negative 13. I'm going down. I'm going down 21. And from 5 to 12, I'm going up 7. So I have negative 21 over 7 is my rate of change which reduces to negative 3, should be my rate of change. Here I'm going up 3, up 3, and up 6, up 6, so 3 over 6, remember it's change in y over change in x, is going to reduce to 1 half, or some people put 0. 0.5, that was fine. Here we go from 8 to 12, that's a rise of 4. Here we go down from 11 to 5. That's a negative 6. So 4 over negative 6 reduces to negative 2 thirds. Remember best math practice says to 
put the negative on top of the fraction. Here we go from 5 to 2, that's down 3. Here we go from 8 to 1, that's down 9. So th negative 3 over negative 9 is going to be a positive 1 third. Those are your answers there. If you don't understand those answers, make sure you check in with your teacher. Um, and you can either try these practice problems first and then write your reflection, or you can reflect your, write your reflection and then um, try these practice problems. Remember, your reflection is telling us what did you do incorrectly on the test and how do you now know what is correct and um, how, can, how can we trust you that you've, you've made growth in this learning target. So that's learning target two, practice for the retake. Learning target three, retake. What's going to happen here is I'm going to go over the um, test questions and then I'm going to give you, you're going to have to write a reflection on your test answers and then I'm going to give you, um, I'm going to give you some practice problems to do. So let's look at the test questions. Remember we have y equals mx plus b. m is our slope, b is our um, y-intercept. So we're going to cross the y-axis here at 8. So down 2, 4, 6, 8. And then my slope is 5 over 3. So I'm going to go up 5 over 3. And really, once I have two points, then I can draw a line through those two points. All right. Here, my, my y-intercept is 7. My slope is negative 1 half. So I'm going to start at 2, 4, 6, 7. I'm going to go down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2. And I can draw my line through there. All right. Moving on, here we have y equals 3x. That's 3 over 1x plus 0. So I'm going to start at 0. I'm going to go up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1. Lots of people struggled with this one, thought it was a vertical line. Um, but since we have that x, that's just up 3 over 1. 3, any whole number um, as a fraction, is just itself over 1. Here, y-intercept is 5. I'm going down 2 over 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, down 2 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, down 2 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, there is my line for that one. All right. So you're going to ask to what did you do wrong on those four problems that got you to the retake process? Um, how do you now know? How do you understand? If you don't understand, talk to your teacher. Um, get Advocate for yourself. And then try these. Bring these to your teacher for your retake. Okay, bring these and your reflection. Should be a paragraph reflection for your teacher. Learning target four, retake video. We're going to go over the test problems and then you're going to write a reflection on what you didn't know and what you now know after watching this video and do some practice before you retake. Remember, standard form doesn't give us the slope, doesn't give us the y-intercept. All it does is sets up the equation in a nice way where we can find the x and y-intercept. Okay, So if we're finding the y, to do that, we just plug in 0 for either x or y. So if I'm finding the x-intercept for this one, so that means I'm going to find out what x is when y is 0, then I'm going to have 4x equals 12, right? And x is going to equal 3 because 6 times 0 is 0, and then four, or 12 divided by 4 is 3. So that means on my x-axis, the line is going to cross at 3. In the same way, if I find y, that means x is going to be 0 if I find my y-intercept. So plus 6y equals 12. So 6y is just going to equal 12. So y is going to equal 2 because 12 divided by 6 is 2. So that means the y-intercept is going to be 2. So that means my line will look like that. It will cross those two points. Because remember, all you need is two points in finding um, a line. Okay, so the same thing here. I'm going to do it a little quick, more quickly. Plug in 2 or 0 for x, and we'll find our y-intercept. So that's going to be 5y equals 15. Divide by 5, divide by 5. y is going to equal 3. So up 1, 2, 3 is my y-intercept. If we have x, then this is going to be 0, because 5 times 0 is 0. So now 15 divided by 2 is going to give x equal to 7.5, right? So this one's a little difficult. Um, 7.5 would be about there. Um, it's, it's fine to estimate 
if you if you look at it, we should have a nice point at 5, 1. And if you plug 5 in for x and 1 in for y, um, you'll get 15 there. Um, so that can that can show you that our slope would be down 2 over 5. Um, so that's good as well. Uh, let's look at these. Let's find the x or the y intercept first. So if x is 0, then we just have negative y equals 9. So that means y would equal negative 9. So then our y intercept is going to be down 2, 4, 6, 8, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9. And then 3x, if y was 0, minus 0 would equal 9, divide by 3, divide by 3, and x would equal 3. So our line would be there, or our x-intercept would be there, and our line should go through those two points. Here, I move this one a little bit. Last one here, if we find the y-intercept, so x is 0, then we have divide by 4, divide by 4, y is going to be negative 2. And then if x is, or if y is 0, then we have negative 8x plus 0 equals negative 8. Well, negative 8 divided by negative 8 is just going to have x equal 1. So we'll find that there. And this will be our line. All right. So those four. If you need to, um, watch the video again. Okay, go backwards and see what I'm doing exactly. And then... Um, write a little reflection. What did you do wrong on the test and how do you know it, know it now? If you don't know it now, go to your teacher, get some more help. Um, if you think you're ready, try practicing these three problems. This one, this one, and this one. So come to your teacher with three graphs with those lines on there and then a reflection of what you did. Okay. Learning target five, retake video, um, graphing horizontal and vertical lines. This, um, if you're here, it's because you didn't really get it at all. So I'm going to give you a quick overview, but then if you still don't get it, you really need to t uh, talk to your teacher. Um, so x, x, or x equal lines are going to be those vertical lines. So this is a x equals that line at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. On the, or on the test, you should have just had a vertical line at 5. x equals 0 is just a vertical line at 0. y equals 3 is a horizontal line at 3 y equals negative 4 is a horizontal line at negative 4 because y is always negative 4, y is always 3, x is always 5, x is always 0. For practice, I don't have practice problems. What I want you to do is to create three vertical lines, three horizontal lines, and write equations for them. Okay, Take that to your teacher, write a little write-up about what you did incorrectly on the test and how you now understand it, or if you don't understand it, go get some more practice from your teacher. LT6 and LT8 went together. You were asked to identify variables and write equations for um, scenarios, okay? So this one, um, people struggled with this first one mostly because we gave you a piece of useless information. Sarah is saving to purchase an MP3 player, okay? That's all you really needed to know. You didn't need to know that it cost $160 because that's not relevant. She's saving $15 per week. Okay, so the independent variable here, and often our independent variable, is time. Okay, time in weeks, and we put details in parentheses besides our variable. The dependent variable, depending on how many weeks have gone by, she saves more money. So the savings is our dependent variable. Okay, and since she doesn't, we're not told she has any money, then she has no money to begin with, no y-intercept, and our equation is just y equals 15x because she gets $15 per week. All right, moving on to the airplane. The airplane is at an altitude of 5,000 feet. It is descending at a rate of 4,000 feet per second. Okay, so what's going on again here? Time is our variable. We're measuring it in seconds this time. Our dependent variable is the altitude or the height, and we're measuring that in feet. Our equation, we start at 5,000, okay? And we're descending, so subtracting 400 feet per second, all right? You could have those switched, but that's our equation there. 
Megan has decided to sh shovel sidewalks this winter to make some money. She has to spend $50 on materials, and then she charges $10 per sidewalk. Write an equation. Um, our independent variable here, she's not doing this over time. We're, she's getting more money each time she shovels a sidewalk. So sidewalks or sidewalks shoveled are going to be our independent variable. Dependent variable is her profit or her money. Okay. Our equation now, now right away she spent, she lost $50 getting ready for this. But then she adds $10 for every sidewalk she, she shovels. Okay. Um, K Dog, I'm going to call him K Dog because I can't know that name. Um, started savings account with money he had given for his birthday. Uh, we're given two points here. So at three weeks, he had $85. At nine weeks, he had $175. So if we go X1, Y1, X2, Y2, then we have 175 minus 85 over 9 minus 3. All right. So that's going to give us 90 over 6, which is 15. That's our slope. Okay, so we know that y equals 15x, but we don't know if maybe Kevin or K Dog, I don't know why I called him Kevin because I call Mr. Graph Kevin sometimes, or K Dog. Um, we don't know how much he started with, he or she. Okay. Uh, so we're going to find our y-intercept. So if we plug in 175 equals 9 times 15 plus b, then we're going to get that b equals 40, okay? And I'll actually do that out for you because 9 times 15, well, let's see, 10 times 15 would be 1, well, let's just do it because I'm being lazy times 15, 150 minus, okay, yep, so 135, and if we minus 135 over here, then 40 equals B, so 40 is what she had right away, or he had, um, so what's going on here, time again, in weeks, and the money savings is the same as the first one, all right, so those were the, the big ones for LT6 and 8. Again, write up a little re re reflective summary. What did you do incorrectly? What did you do correctly? Um, or, and what do you now know? How, do, how is your thinking changed? And then practice these problems. Write an equation for each. Define variables for each. Okay. Um, this one, I'll warn you, and this is off of that checkup, you need those two points. Okay. What are the two points that go with this information? All right. LT7 retake video. You're asked to construct linear equations given a graph. So let's look at these. Um, we need two nice points. We need a rise, a run, and a y-intercept because we need our equations to be in the form y equals mx plus b. So here we go up 3 over 1. So our equation would be y equals 3 over 1 or just 3x plus we, our y-intercept is 1. Here we start at 5, we go down 2 over 1, so our equation would be y equals negative 2 over 1x, and then we start at 5, so plus 5. Here we start at negative 4, y equals negative 4, and then we're going up 1, 2, 3, and over 1, 2, 3, 4 before we get um, to the next nice point, so 3 fourths x minus 4. Here we are starting at 1, 2, 3, so we're going to have plus 3. We're going down 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 5 before we get to what looks like the next nice point. So n down 4 over 5x. All right, so those are the four there. If that didn't clarify things for you, then you need to check in with your teacher. If you made a simple mistake and you understand that mistake now, write a little reflection, write a summary up of what you did incorrectly and how your thinking has now changed. Um, and then give that to your teacher along with the, the equations for these three, um, these three graphs. Be careful with this one um, because you're counting not by ones, okay? So you're not going up three here, okay? Be careful with that.
LT9 retake video. You were asked to construct linear equations given two points. What we're going to do here is we are going to go through the test questions. You're going to write a reflection saying what you did wrong, how you now understand the learning, and then, um, and then do some practice problems to give to your teacher. Okay. First things first, we need to define x1, y1, x2, y2, and then follow our formula. To find the slope, we need 13 minus 6 over 2 minus 0. 13 minus 6 gives us a change in 7, right? And then 2 minus 0 is 2. You can either re leave that as 7 halves or that's 3.5. And in this one, we're given the y-intercept, so we don't have to do any calculating for the y-intercept. So I... All right, looking at this one, we have x1, y1, x2, y2. Again, we need to take negative 20 minus negative 8 over 10, oops, 10 minus 6. Minusing a negative is like adding. So negative 20 plus 8 gives us negative 12. 10 minus 6 gives us 4. That's negative 3. And so then what I'm going to do here to find b is I'm going to plug in an x and a y into the equation that I have. So right now I know the equation is y equals negative 3x plus some number b. So I'm going to plug in 10 and 20. So negative 20 is our, our y, so negative 20 is going to equal negative 3 times 10 plus b. So that's negative 20 equals negative 30 plus b. So then if we add 30 to both sides or we just say, okay, what gets negative 30 to negative 20? b equals 10. So our equation should be y equals negative 3x plus 10. All right, here x1, y1, x2, y2. Uh, we have negative 2 minus negative 14, and then 2 minus 5. So negative 2 minus negative is adding, so that's positive 12 over 3, right? So that's going to be m equals 4 is our slope. Again, we have to plug that in. I'm going to use this point just because they're little. So negative 2 is going to equal 4, which is our slope, times the x value is 2 plus b. So negative 2 equals 8 plus b. So if we add or subtract 8 to both sides, then we're going to get negative 10. So our equation should be y equals uh, 4x minus 10. And then over here, x1, y1, x2, y2. We have 13 minus 8 and 8 minus 6. All right, so then we have 13 minus 8 is going to give us 5. 8 minus 6 is going to give us 2. That's our slope. So then if we bring this up over here, I'm going to use this point this time. Um, 8 is going to equal 5 halves of 6 plus b. Well, 5 times 6 is going to give us 30, divided by 2 is 15, plus b. So if we minus 15 from both sides, then we have 15 minus 8 is 7. So 7 equals b, but it would be a negative because we have bigger num negative numbers. So y equals 5 halves, or 2.5x, minus 7. So that's our equation there. These two are the special cases, if you remember from the video. Our x is both 3 here, so our slope would be, if we did 20 minus 9 over 3 minus 3, we'd have um, 11 over 0, which is undefined. So what our equation is, is x equals 3, because this is a line at x equals 3. This is a vertical line that goes right there. Okay, over here... The y's are both 6, so if we have 6 minus 6 over negative 4 minus 80, then we're going to have 0 over negative 84, which is going to be 0. This is what slope dude calls 0 fun, remember, and this is undefined. So this is just an equation y equals 6. All right, so 
those are your answers. If you feel better, what you need to do is write up a little reflection. How, what did I do wrong? What, did I, what do I now understand? What were my mistakes before? And then um, try these practice problems and then bring those to your teacher for LT9 to be able to retake.